Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Kevin Encrypted and we're back with another tutorial for Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. Today we're looking at water and sewage. Before we jump into the game and actually see the buildings and how they function, a few basic things. When it comes to water, we need to keep in mind three things. What is the water quality? What is the water elevation? And what is the water pressure? Water quality affects the health of our people because the better the quality, the healthier they are, and a lot of industry requires specific levels of water quality to operate. Water elevation affects the pressure, water always flows downhill and tries to equalize like regular water. And of course, water pressure affects how much water can flow through a pipe. As for sewage, we need to keep in mind the sewage quality, the water quality. The higher the quality, the less pollution it produces. The lower the quality, the more pollution it produces. We'll talk more about that when we get into the game. Sewage elevation, again, affects the pressure. Sewage flows down. And if you need to elevate it, you need to use a pump to bring it back up. And of course, the higher the pressure, the higher the flow in the pump. Now, the way water and sewage works, it's simple. You have a source that feeds into a storage or a distribution, and then from there it goes to a consumer. And now that we got the basics out of the way, let's have a quick look at the buildings. Okay, let's have a look at the buildings for water. We have two types of pumps. We have a small pump and a large pump. The small pump can only push through enough water for a medium pipe, while the big one can push through enough water for two large pipes. Then when it comes to storage, we have a small water tower with a single output and a single input, a large water tower with two inputs, two outputs, and an underwater reservoir with two inputs and two outputs. As for water producers, we have a small water well and a big water well. The difference besides the production is the big water well requires seven people to operate, while the small one does not require any people. Additionally, we have a small surface water outflow, which is a very basic way of getting water of very low quality, useful sometimes in industry. As we said earlier, once you produce the water, you need to send it into a storage or a distribution or some sort of processing plant. In this case, we send the water into the big water treatment plant or the small water treatment plant, so we can improve the quality and utilize it for our workers or anything else that requires high quality water. If we don't need it, for example, we are making concrete, which requires very low quality of water, you can just use the basic flow without treating it. Something that confuses a lot of people, a small water treatment plant will output exactly enough water for one large pipe, while a big water treatment plant will output exactly enough water for two full large pipes. Now for consumers, we have a truck loading facility here where trucks can go, load water directly from here or unload water directly here. A water substation, which we will talk a lot more about when we look at the city because this is what distributes water to buildings and people. And then we have a water switch, which act as a splitter. When it comes to sewage, again, we have a sewage truck, which functions the same way as the water truck. Trucks can go here to pick up sewage or unload sewage. And we also have a sewage switch, which allow us to connect multiple sewages into one. So this combines while the one for water splits. Sewage also has treatment plants, a big treatment and a small treatment. Same logic, one large pipe for the small sewage, two large pipes for the big one. Do not let the multiple inputs and outputs trick you. Now, what is a consumer for sewage? That would be a sewage discharge station. So our citizens will produce sewage, it will flow all the way here and we'll dump it into the water. If we don't take care of it and we just dump it without processing it, this will generate a lot of pollution and make our people sick in the vicinity. That's why we pass it through the sewage treatment plant. They take it up to 85% water quality. It doesn't go higher. We use chemicals, of course. And then we dump that into the sea or a river or a lake, whatever you have near you. 85 is the threshold of not creating pollution. Anything under 85 will create pollution. And the lower it is, the more pollution it's going to create. Now let's get into the fun stuff. Let's see how they actually work together. 
I'm going to go into show overlays, building properties, and then water flow, and look into the underground layout so we can see how water will flow here. So here we have a water a large water tower with a small water pumping station and a large a big water pumping station feeding into another water tower. I have two small water towers, one connected to a small water pump, another one connected to a big water pump, again to a water tower, and then we have a large water underground reservoir feeding into a big water pump and two of its outputs feeding directly into this water tower. Let's run the game for a moment. Okay, so you will see this is pushing out about 200. How? One of the large water pipes can carry about 127-ish. And over here, this is another large pipe, but it doesn't produce as much. It doesn't push as much because the water pumping station is actually a bottleneck. So it will fully saturate this pipe, and then it will push whatever else it can through this. These two outputs work independently. Now here, this little one is pushing about 100 down to here, and this is becoming a bottleneck at about 40. Meanwhile, this that goes directly into a big water pumping station, it can push the full capacity. The numbers are not exactly precise, sometimes a bit more passes through, sometimes a bit less. I think it has to do with the calculations. Now, if we run it for a little longer, you will see that this one pushes about 150 to 131, and this is splitting the output exactly in half, because it cannot push more than this. Here is a little trick that I found, which I suspect is a bug, but it's a fun one to share. So if we put a water switch, we connect a singular pipe, so we want the well to feed its full capacity into a switch, and use one side of the switch here and one side of the switch here, so two of its outputs, it's going to push double the amount of what this can do. This only works if you go from a big well into a switch and then into a storage. Any other building, it will not work because they have some sort of limiter on how much they can intake and how much they, they can export. Okay, and here we have a little city of about 6,000 people, and we are giving them some water. Let's see what we have. We have two big water wells, two big water pipes, well, pumps, and then a water treatment plant. Let's look underground. So we're getting two of the outputs here with big pipes going into this, and the two of them are feeding directly into the water treatment. Same here, into this. This produces about 200 something each at full capacity, so this should give it about 400. This at maximum can process about 380 to 400. If you connect more, it won't do anything more with them. It cannot do anything more with them. Now, from here, from the three outputs it has, we can only get two full pipes fully saturated. So we take the two of them and we feed them directly into a big water pump. And this goes all the way over here to this water substation, which is connected to everything and feeds everything. Now, these water substations, they have an internal capacity of 20 cubic meters of water, but what matters is how much you can flow to them. So if you can flow, let's say, 300 cubic meters, that's how much they will support. If you only give them 10, they will only support 10. So even in really big cities, one of them is plenty, as long as you have enough flow. Let's have a look at the overlays. So water flow, because I want to show you something interesting. Over here, I have another water tank that I'm feeding through a small water tower. When the game is running, you will see this one feeds 82 to everything, and this one barely feeds stuff. That is because I gave it a high priority. If I remove the high priority, then the game will switch. It will give it some here based on demand, but this one will take precedence. Why? 
I think it's because these go arms from a storage while this one doesn't. Both of them fit the same buildings, and both of them are keeping up somehow. But if we give it higher priority, it will utilize this line first. Very important when you try to balance your water or when you want to move away your old pipes to set up some new ones. One more thing about water. So, here we have another setup. We have a big water tower connecting to a big water pumping station. We have a water switch, and these will need to feed these three towers. So let's empty the storage so we can have some flow. Okay, let's enable the overlay so we can see what happens, and let's go. Here you will see again the thing that I mentioned with the switch. It will try to push everything for a bit, but because it's three different buildings, it will limit it to a singular pipe. If two of the pipes, two of the outputs from the switch were going into the same, then it would fit double. Another thing when it comes to pressure. So if you enable the underground, and here you have your input number one, you will see the game actually highlights it. And then when you go on your output, you will see output two in this case, it's highlighted, 5.3 bars of pressure, maximum pressure is six. And it, the game tells us that at maximum flow, at max pressure per day, it can push a full capacity for one large pipe. Interestingly enough, if you see the same thing for the big water tower, it actually says it can only push up to 77 cubic meters of water, which is incorrect. So I think it's a bug in the tooltip, but that's for the developer to find out. And last but not least, let's talk about sewage. So here we have a sewage tank, which will connect with all the buildings in the area that it can reach within about 250, 260 meters and start collect the sewage in one spot. If we look underground, we have this big pipe going through. So what have I done here? If you go on your terrain tools and you select tool for measurement and you look where this is, this is at four meters. Now, from the point that you will start all the way to where you're actually gonna dump it in the water, you need the point you start to be the highest and the point that you release it into the water to be the lowest. In this case, the other one is almost five meters, this is zero meters, so it's exactly on water level, which is perfect. Now, what happens when you have two of them and you want to combine them? You will see here I have another one for the citizens. So I took a second pipe, I connected it to a switch, and the two of them are pushing through the sewage. If we go into overlays and look at sewage flow, we will see here that this one is pushing about 70 something and the other one doesn't have any at the moment. Something to keep in mind, even if you connect three big pipes into this switch, it will only allow the full capacity of one switch pump to go through, never more. If for some reason the pipe you have needs to go deeper into the ground because other buildings are in the way, elevation issues, and you need to bring it back up so it can continue flowing, and then keep you know going downhill towards the place it needs to be released, that's when you can use a sewage pump. If we look at the sewage pumps, we have three of them, five meters, 10 meters, and 15 meters. Now for some bonus stuff, and it's one of the questions most people will always ask, how much water do I need for my Republic? Well, one water treatment plan can accommodate about 15,000 people comfortably. You can push it up to 20 if you're very efficient and you have really good flow of workers. But about 15 is the safe bet. So let's have a look at something tricky. If you build a fabric factory, you will see that it needs water to produce fabrics. And if you try to build a building, you will see it has two connections for water and two outputs for sewage. Now, that water that you will import into the building is only for production, not for drinking. So you will need a water substation to provide water for your workers to keep, well, both their health and productivity up. Meanwhile, if you go into the food industry, so food factory requires water. 
but it has no connection. Same with the distillery, same thing. Or a livestock farm, none of them have a pipe connection. These ones will take water directly from the water substation. So keep that in mind when you design your food infrastructure, alcohol, and of course, livestock infrastructure. And the last tip for this tutorial, you can build your water infrastructure right in the middle of your city, to ha so you don't need to use buses to bring workers to it. None of the buildings produce pollution, and all they need is a little bit of workers to operate. It's important to note that the big water pumps take a lot of power, so be cautious with your power consumption. And this concludes this tutorial. Thanks everyone for watching. Don't forget to drop a comment, like, subscribe, you know, all those fun things. Let me know if you found this tutorial helpful, and I will catch you all on the next one. Bye bye.